With sweat dripping all over him, Sebastian stood behind a counter with a fake smile plastered across his face, waiting to take orders from the next customer. His life was uninteresting. He woke up each day at 7 a.m. for a jog, after which he showered and had breakfast at the nearest eatery. He then went to work a minimum wage job at a fast food outlet. He stood there all day without a break, taking order after order, and once his shift was over, he would head back home. Home was too nice of a word for it. He lived in a run-down apartment which stank of sewage and was poorly lit. Rats and other rodents and plentiful, but there was little he could do. With the wage he got, this was the most he could afford. He would try to get as much sleep as possible in the noisy environment he was surrounded by before the next day started. And so, his life continued, day after day, following the same routine with little change. Today was no different, but Sebastian had barely gotten any sleep the night before, and today was not a good day. He was constantly on edge. However, he had to keep going on lest he might lose his job. It was exhausting, and the job gave him no joy. It drained the life out of him. Most of all, it drove him mad. These entitled customers walking in and demanding royal treatment pissed him off. The worst ones were the people who argued and made a fuss regarding their order. Oh, how he wished he could silence them. But instead, he had to give them a tight-lipped smile and obey their orders like a puppy. He saw a woman enter. And with one look at her, he knew she was one of the troublesome customers. She strutted in and made her order for a coffee. So far, there was no trouble, which took Sebastian by surprise. He then prepared her coffee and walked to her table to hand it over. Is there anything else you need, madam? He asked. She took one sip of the coffee. This coffee is way too sweet! She shouted and threw the burning hot liquid onto Sebastian. Everyone around stopped and stared at him. You listen! Remake the coffee, else I'll call the manager, she demanded. He gave her a tight-lipped smile and replied, Yes. Sebastian was fuming inside. His blood was boiling with rage. How dare she humiliate him like that? She thought he was nothing but a low-life worker and that she was above him. Little did she know the real him and what he was capable of. He could think of plenty of cruel things to do to her. Then, she would not be so haughty and demanding. Instead, she'd be begging for her life. Later he told himself. These things he'd plan later. For now, he had to get the coffee ready again. Once the shift finished, Sebastian walked out into the chilly outside air. He was in the mood for a hunt today. He had to vent all that built-up frustration from the day. But first, he had to find his prey. Someone weak. Someone who looked like that woman from earlier. He first had to travel elsewhere, though, to find this victim. The police were on the hunt for the Midnight Strangler. All the news channels constantly played footage of the case. As Sebastian drove his beat-down second-hand Volkswagen, he smirked, knowing with confidence that they would never find him. He was too careful, too smart. His modus operandi for every kill was precisely similar. He strangled his victims to death while sitting over them. He liked watching the light go out of their eyes, filled with fear. Before that, however, he'd kidnap them, and each time, he would use a different abandoned building that had no connection to him. He would leave the bodies there to rot. Nothing could tie back to him. He wore a mask and gloves at all times. With the cold weather, everyone wore gloves, so this wasn't unordinary. He left no fingerprints nor DNA. Even if the police somehow connected things to him, they'd never have the proof to lock him up. He enjoyed the thrill of being above them all and the power it gave him. They thought he was a nobody, working a terrible job, and considered him someone who could be treated horribly with no respect. He endured it all for he knew that though they may not know who the killer on the loose is, they were all still terrified of him. This city wouldn't ever forget him. Heck, this world wouldn't. He'd leave a mark, brutal enough that they'd fear him for decades to come. As he prowled the deserted streets looking for someone, his eyes caught sight of a woman walking alone. She seemed around 50 years. Perfect. She looked like the horrible woman from earlier. He drove ahead, stopped there, and got out of the car wearing his mask and cap. Aunt Maggie? Is that really you? I can't believe it's actually you, he said enthusiastically as he approached her. Excuse me, please. Do I know you? The woman replied. Oh, no. I'm sorry, ma'am. I mistook you for someone I knew. You look strikingly similar, he said, flashing a charming smile. Oh, is that so? She replied warily. I haven't seen my aunt in six years. She was like a mother to me, and one day she just vanished. I've been looking for her ever since, but with no success. Every time I see someone of her stature, my heart fills with hope, thinking it might be her. But alas, 
I never did find her, he said, breaking down into tears. Oh no, don't cry. I know all too well what you're going through, but don't lose hope, son. She responded with so much care, instantly dropping her guard down. She tried consoling him, but he continued to cry. He eventually calmed himself down and said, May I walk with you, ma'am? You remind me of much of her. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Yeah, sure, why not? I live just up ahead. You could join me for a cup of tea and then maybe you'd feel better? She replied unsuspectingly. I'd love that. Thank you so much. He replied, sounding grateful. Sebastian was smiling on the inside. Oh, how easy it was to fool these women. This was a piece of cake. They always fell for it. This one especially was way easier than any of his previous attempts. He walked by her side, and they made small talk. As they neared his car, he took out the propofol injection he had kept. It would knock her out in seconds. She wouldn't even remember what had happened. The movies lied, and he knew this. Chloroform would take way too long to kick in, and he wouldn't take that risk. There would be enough of a window for the person to escape, and that was the last thing he wanted. He opened the door to the passenger seat. Would you mind getting in, please, ma'am? He said. She looked at him, confused, and before she could realize what was happening, he had injected her with the chemical, and she passed out, falling right into the seat. Sebastian took the quiet routes with few people and very low surveillance. His Volkswagen was most definitely not the kind of car people would notice. Still, he wanted as few witnesses as possible. After around 15 minutes of driving, he reached his destination an old ice cream factory that had to be shut down due to unhygienic practices. He had visited the place the night before, and it was perfect for what he wanted to do, with no people around. He opened the door, lifted her up, and carried her into the building. He took the rope he had left earlier and made sure he tied both her legs and hands up securely. Now, all that was left to do was wait for her to regain consciousness, and then he could kill her. He went to the car, took her purse lying on the seat, and walked back in. He opened it and started looking for something he could keep as a trophy. His shelf at home was lined up with different things he had taken from his previous victims. That was his Hall of Fame. Every item there represented a successful kill, and having 17 items arranged there was not an easy task. He had worked for this. He had worked both hard and smart, using all the intelligence he had to evade the police, and so far, he had been doing pretty well. He kept rummaging through her purse to find his 18th item. There wasn't much inside her purse, just a few coins and notes. But then his hand brushed what seemed like a thick paper, a photograph perhaps. Perfect, he thought. He took it out and turned it around to see what the photo was of. He froze, and his heart started racing. He couldn't believe what he saw. The picture was not of something, but someone who looked all too familiar. As he looked at the picture, a younger him stared back with a smiling face. He didn't know what to think. His thoughts were a mess. How did this woman get hold of this picture? Was this his mother? Sebastian looked at the photograph again. He recognized it all too well. This was the last good memory he had before his life took a turn for the worse. The five-year-old him had thought it was going to be a good day. He was going to go to Disneyland. It was any child's dream come true. He had so much fun throughout the day, but it didn't last long. One second, his mother was there, and the next time he looked up, she wasn't. She had abandoned him in that crowded place. He had screamed out loud, desperately calling out to her, but she was gone and would never return. Since that day, his life was never been one of joy or happiness. He was placed under foster care and kept moving from one place to another. He had no place to call home and no one to call family. Moreover, foster care was most definitely not easy. He went through a lot. Each place posed a different problem. At the first one he went to, he was bullied severely and beaten by the other kids until he was bruised. Every time he tried complaining, he'd only get beaten up even more. The next one he went to, he was abused by the foster father. He was only nine at the time, and he was too small to even understand what was happening. But that had scarred him for life. Eventually, he ended up in an orphanage where again he was bullied, and the meals he got could barely sustain him. He went from one prison to another, constantly fighting some battle. He never had the luxury of peace or happiness. Each time, he hoped it would get better. But it only got worse. The second he turned 18, he couldn't remain in the orphanage anymore. They kicked him out. For days, he roamed the streets, unable to fend for himself. He had no education, no way to earn something. He spent his nights sleeping on the cold, hard pavement, with nothing to protect him from the rain or chilly night. He used to rummage around the dustbins near fast food restaurants, 
hoping to find something to eat. He had no will to live or go on anymore. It was at a time like this that he committed his first kill, and since then, he had something to look forward to. The thrill he felt was unmatched by anything else. He eventually got a job and a place to stay, but he never stopped. These murders gave him a purpose, an outlet. Some days, thoughts of what he would have been if his mother hadn't abandoned him fill his mind. He would have lived a carefree life with food, love, and care. He would have gone to school and lived the life of someone ordinary. He had always hated his mother for that. She was the one who had taken all this away from him. The younger him had never lost hope and always thought she would look for him and come back for him someday. Still, he realized now that it was incredibly naive, for she never came looking for him. She had never cared. She had let him suffer. Perhaps he wouldn't have turned into the killer he was today if she was there. But she wasn't. She had abandoned him. The young, innocent, happy boy in that picture was long gone because of her, and instead was a cold, ruthless 22-year-old Sebastian. He was alone and had no one he loved. Yet, when Sebastian looked at the people around him living in everyday life, he didn't envy them as he once had. Instead, he felt bad for them, for they would never experience the thrill and adrenaline he gets each time he takes a life. The sound of someone struggling broke Sebastian away from his train of thought. The woman tried to break free, but of course, she couldn't. He had tied it too firmly. Help! Someone, please help! She screamed as loudly as she could, as though her life depended on it, which it did. Help! She continued to scream while Sebastian regarded her coolly. No one's coming here, woman, he said. Please, why are you doing this? Let me go. I swear I won't tell anyone. She begged. He chuckled. He never understood why these people said that when they knew very well it won't work. She kept screaming and wailing continuously until, eventually, all fight left her body, and she had given up much quicker than anyone else he had seen. Was the story about your aunt a lie? At least answer that before you do it. He didn't respond. The thoughts of that photograph never left his mind, and he had intended to ask her. Explain how you got this. Who's the boy? He asked, showing the photograph. Tears brimmed her eyes and started streaming down her face. That's my little boy, Seb. He was exactly five in this photo. I lost him. She choked out, weeping. What do you mean, lost? Did you never care to look for him? He bellowed. Oh, I did. Every single day of my life, I did. I never lost hope. I put advertisements in every newspaper. I put up posters all around cities. Every call that came, I would answer with hope, praying that it was about Seb. But no, days, months, and then eventually years passed, and the hope kept dwindling down. The police stopped looking. They say there's no chance he's alive now. But I can't completely lose hope. I know my boy is out there. The only reason I wake up every day is with the hope that today's the day. She detailed as she continued crying. Sebastian's eyes pooled with tears. For a man who hadn't felt any sort of emotion in the past years, he was feeling too much at once. Wordlessly, he untied her legs and hands. She appeared confused, but he didn't respond. Why? she asked, standing in front of him. Sebastian then slowly took off his hat and then his mask. She froze. Seb, is that you? She couldn't believe that it was him who was in front of her. After all these years, 17 years, 17 whole years of waiting. She reached out, touching his face, afraid that her hands might go right through and that she was imagining this. But no, he was real. Sebastian fell into her arms, and the two of them stood there, hugging and sobbing continuously. Oh, my boy, you've grown so much. Every day I'd envisioned what you'd look like today, and you're exactly as I pictured. I missed you, Mom, he said, his voice cracking. I'm so sorry, baby. I wasn't there all these years. I tried. I really did. I never stopped trying, but I was never able to find you. She replied with regret. A few seconds passed, and only then did the reality of the situation sink in. Seb, what has become of you? Is this what you do now? Did you kill all those women? Mom, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'm not a good person, and I know that. I'm not the Sebastian you left that day. I became something else. A monster, answered Sebastian, and for the first time, he was filled with an emotion he had never felt before. Shame. And it was only now that he realized the enormity of his actions. I couldn't stop once I started. I had no other purpose, no joy, and this kept me going. He fell into her arms. He was much bigger than her, 
Yet the sight in front was of a fragile boy clinging to a long-lost love for his dear life and sanity. The logical part of her knew that she should turn him in, that he was so very wrong. He was a murderer. Yet all her eyes saw was the son she had lost. And as selfish and cruel as it seemed, she decided to protect him. She put her arms around him and comforted him. It's okay, son. It's over now. Those days are now behind you. You can become a better person. Promise me you'll change. Become better. He nodded affirmatively. Don't worry now. I lost you once, but I never will again. We have each other now, Seb. We can finally be one family. A happy one. I love you, son, so much.